Hey guys, welcome to an instructional video for Age of Empires 4. Age of Empires 4 is a, a new game that just came out a few days ago and as such I thought it would be really helpful to make an instructional video that will teach you a bunch of things about the game that may not be immediately apparent. If you come from Warcraft 3 or SE2 like me, there's going to be a number of mechanics in the game that are unfamiliar to you. And I'm hoping to help you to jumpstart your start in AoE 4 just a little bit. So I want to teach you about the following topics. These controls uh, I want to teach you about. Idle villagers utilization. Idle army. Control grouping, focusing on groups of units, barracks control, villager safety, villagers back to work, making multiple buildings, rally pointing traders, villagers and army, shepherding sheep back in an efficient way to your town center and mill, the grid system and entering submenus for it and the best way to make walls. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the control groups in the settings. If you go to the settings, there is a lot of information coming at you when you look at the controls. You're going to start on the default profile. Now, Age of Empires 4 doesn't allow you to rebind, uh, to change away from a system that isn't grid controls. There have been some uh, criticisms about that, and maybe the developers will listen to it, maybe they won't. But there's currently no way to go to the traditional Blizzard RTS style, where your keys are all over the keyboard, representing roughly the letter in a word of a hotkey you're trying to press. For example, an Ogre Mage would be O hotkey in some games. Whereas in this game, it's all bound to the grid. That means that Grid has several sub-menus. If you look at a villager, there is a little hotkey here, Q, that enters the sub-menu for this, then making the whole thing represent the uh, grid of that control grouping. That means if you press Q, Q, you get a house. However, if you press W to enter the second H sub-menu, and then Q, you get a blacksmith. Therefore, you need to be very aware, especially in regards to your muscle memory, which is something that you want to build up over a long time to create autopilot, that you need to see this selection circle around the H to see in which submenu you are. In the heat of battle, you may sometimes actually miss that. And uh, yeah, that's something you need to become aware of. That's why a lot of people are still clicking pictures, because it seems faster than to bother with it. This will come over time when you practice it more and more. And uh, yeah, that's something you don't need to worry too much about if you don't have it yet. But I think it's good to start trying to practice it as early as possible, as it is going to give you extra speed when the game goes on. So that's the first thing about submenus. Now, let's talk a little bit about the nitty gritty of those submenus. If I select a villager and I press Q, it highlights this submenu. If I then want the blacksmith, there's no way that I can press a hotkey to get there anymore. I first need to press escape to exit the Q menu and then press W to go to the blacksmith corresponding hotkey. That's, some, that's the first step that I wanted to teach you. Now let's talk a little bit first about idle villager utilization. When you look at the hotkeys and the default menu, in the default menu, in the common keys, and then you check here, idle villagers have the hotkey of full stop, which is in the middle of the keyboard. That seems to be directly counter to the everything on the left side of your keyboard of useful keys. And it's all the way at the dot, which on my US international standard keyboard is in the center bottom of the keyboard. Not exactly very helpful to try and reach all the way there. So I rebound this to F1. This is corresponding to the Blizzard RTS style in StarCraft 2, and I found this to be really useful. I can then press Control F1 to select all idle villagers, which means when I'm playing the game, I press Control F1. I'm going to be able to take all the villagers that were not currently on a job and send them to a resource. Now what's interesting is that the if you scroll down here in the main control menu, normally the default is select and center camera. I don't think this is, this is what I've been playing with so far, but I don't think this is the best way to do it. After all, if I'm here, let's say I am uh, looking somewhere on the map and I'm like, hey, I want to send all my villagers to this gold and I press Ctrl F1. I'm like, wait, where was that gold again? And now I'm looking at the idle villagers, but that is not good for me to have a forced focus command on the villagers. Therefore, you go here, you say only select, all right? And the same for idle military, 
only select, you're already going to get UI feedback here to see what you've just selected. We see seven villages have been selected. You can then keep looking at the target and send them to the gold. Maybe make a mining camp if you like. Here's another thing to explain. When you make a mining camp, mining camps can mine stone and gold. If you make a mill, they can farm animals or uh, farms. Whatever is in the closest vicinity to that building, the villagers will auto work on it when they finish this building. So you don't need to give a shift command to go to gold afterwards, they will. However, keep in mind if there's a gold here and a stone here, they're probably gonna mine stone as they're closer to it when they finish the mining camp. So if you have a preference, go ahead and give them that shift command. Wow, did you see that? One of those villagers dropped off 11 wood before he started mining stone. I had no idea that that was even possible at a mining camp. Apparently, when a villager is still carrying a different resource, you know what I've been doing so far? I took villagers, I made them send back wood to the mill, to the lumber camp or the town center, then I send them to the new task. But apparently the game has an anti-wasting mechanic where they drop it off just as an exception when they start on a new task. And apparently that's the same to Age of Empires 2. And I didn't know that. So this is nice to know. I just learned that myself as well. All right. So uh, I, I recommend to turn off that focus for the villagers and using Ctrl F1, which is very easy to hit, to use all your idle villagers. Next, let's talk about idle, idle army utilization. Say, for instance, that this group of good people here, this scout, this villager, and these villagers, is my primary army. This is my attack force that is looking to take on the enemy. And I want to add extra army units to this group. You can see here that control group one is four villagers and a scout. If I go to new units and I press shift F1, it adds them to the control group. Next time I refer to control group one, it's all of them for villagers, the scout, the archer and the spearman. If I go to this group and I press control F1, it overrides and loses the original units and it only involves the new units. But there is a way to use units without any control group whatsoever. For instance, these five units are now in control group one, and these are not in any control group right now. If I hit the hotkey F7, it selects all idle units, which actually includes this unit because he's not currently moving. So idle means units that are not currently preoccupied. Had this guy been scouting and I press F7 again, then he is not involved. So it is not non-control grouped units, but it's units that are not currently doing anything. This can still be a useful hotkey. I personally assigned it to hotkey F7, which is right next to my all army hotkey. And we'll talk about all army hotkey in a second. So if you look at the control groups that I have, I've got F7 is right here is select all idle military units, whereas F8 is all military units. And that's a bit of a misnomer, but we'll get around to that. So say for instance, you don't have any control groups selected for new reinforcements, and you're getting attacked suddenly on your gold. You can just hit F7 and then press A and move towards your gold. And even if you end up sending your scout back because he was idle, the moment you press control group F1 again and you start skirmishing with your opponent, he has now been given a new command and you've still succeeded in the task of sending several random idle military to that place. Ideally, you do everything perfectly, you control everything like an octopus and you send exactly the units you want to send somewhere. But sometimes it, get mess it gets messy. So you press F7 and send the units there. All right, that's a tip. Then let's talk about the all army hotkey. In Age of Empires 4 and in any RTS, all army is actually something that's open for interpretation, even though it seems obvious uh, for on first sight. When you press F8, which is all army, it takes my spearman, my archers, and I think we can agree that those are military. But the scout, sometimes, you want to just position it next to an opponent and see what their town center is doing. So when I press all army hotkey in order to deal with a large threat, I'm necessarily using a shortcut to control my army. It's better to be specific, but every now and then excrement hits the fan 
and you actually want to send all your army to deal with the threat. And sometimes that takes back your scout, so that kind of sucks. So here's how you actually want to control it if you get to this situation. You press F8, you quickly look at this, and then you shift, left click anything that you don't want in that group, and you select it out and you take it out of it. It's going to take a little bit of practice to recognize the icons and to remove the units that you want to remove, but that's how I do it. I then press Ctrl F1, and now my F8 has become my Ctrl F1 minus the undesirables. Here's the same thing how it works for buildings. If I press F2, that is the key that I assigned to all of my unit producing structures. Now, the default hotkey is different. If you look at all... Uh, military buildings the default is f1 but we've already shown that i'm using that for idle villagers so i've moved everything up a bit i've got f2 f3 f4 f5 all military all economy all technology all landmarks wonders and capital town centers these are your win conditions and that's why they're important that's what i have on f3 f4 f5 but let's talk about managing your unit production if i have two unit producing structures on control f4 or three in this case Th those are my barracks, and that's how I make units. The way that the game does it is, if you have barracks highlighted, which you can get to by pressing tab once, you see the overview of your barracks units. If you press tab again, you see the overview of your archery range units. And the archery range has a total of seven clickable pictograms, whereas the barracks has a total of four. Some of those are in the same spot as one another, yet when you press on all, there is some overlap and there's some lack of overlap you see that from barracks to all it adds only the archery range stuff that doesn't already have a, the same position so all actually leads to very inconsistent results in terms of reading the game in a way i wish it didn't exist i wish that when i pressed four it would just go to my barracks and then when i press tab it goes to my archery range that's how it works in blizzard rts's there are some advantages though. If you happen to see the units that you want to produce here, be it man-at-arms and hand cannoneers, you can press WE, you can spam it, and the buildings will be producing as follows. As we see, we have two archery ranges, so there's two hand cannoneers simultaneously producing and one man-at-arms. But if I wanted to make uh, crossbowmen, I need to navigate to the archery range and find them here. This can take a little getting used to, there's pros and cons, but the way to circumvent that is as follows. Press F4 and immediately hit tab, then start thinking, then start looking. If you want it to be like a Blizzard RTS control scheme, you just press that extra tab to go to the next spot. Now, supposedly there's a hotkey for cancelling stuff. Is it that I've overridden it? Let's go back to default and see if it's true. It is not true. S does not cancel stuff. I've seen that before. As far as I know, in fact, and I'm just looking at my Twitch chat at the same time, there's no way to cancel buildings. Uh, there's no way to cancel uh, building unit queue production. Stop cancels buildings, for example, if I click on this house, this blueprint that has just consumed 50 lumber to be made in the future, and I press S, it cancels construction. But there is no current way to remove units from your queue with a hotkey, which is quite a pity. For example, if I want to press many men at arms, I can actually hold the W key. And as fast as the keyboard repeat delay of your keyboard is, which you, by the way, should put on the minimum repeat delay, window settings, uh, open your Windows key, press control panel, navigate to keyboard, go to keyboard repeat delay and make it the lowest so that when you hold S, or W, you get the quickest possible uh, spam of that command. But if I want to cancel all these, it's left-click action. You can, of course, also do Shift W and you make five at the same time. But so long as spam W is available, I don't see why I would want to do that, except when I necessarily need Shift 5. Shift 5 is something Age of Empires 2 players are very aware of to be used. I'm not used to it. I prefer to just hold the, the mouse for a bit, hold the key for a bit and make that many. The cancelling thing though is tedious and the, that actually works differently in Bliss RTS. If you press escape in Bliss RTS, it cancels a number of stuff from the queue. In this game, it deselects everything that you have selected, which I don't think is very useful. I don't think I ever need to deselect anything. I'll just select the new thing. 
So I don't think it's done in the best way possible, but I'm not complaining. I'm just going to work with the system. Now, next topic, uh, control grouping. Control grouping is a very helpful way to quickly refer to different things in the game. And here is my preferred control grouping system. You may find your own uh, to be more intuitive or helpful, but this is how I play it. I typically have three control groups available for army. I think there's a good reasoning to actually have access to more, but throughout all my RTS playing, and I am a veteran RTS player, I've always found it hard to use more than three control groups for units. Four has typically been my unit producing structures, and I could of course move that up to a later tier, like number five, six or seven, but as we all know, one, two, three, four, five are easiest to click. And I do think having all my barracks on four is comfortable and my town center on five. So here's what I got. All army, my blob, my massive invasion force, my defense force, all army is on one. Two is gonna have scouts, cavalry, flanks, or ranged. It's gonna be something else that wants to occupy a different space on the battlefield. Three is typically gonna be either my scholars, my monks, my religious units, or my trebuchets. If I have mangonels, all my mangonels are on two, my trebuchets are on three. They're clearly different units with different purpose and their focus fire is very important. It's f more okay to put all my pikemen and my archers together, spearmen and archers together, and then to have those really special siege units in different groups, in my opinion. Control group four is gonna be my unit producing structures. Uh, control group five is my town center. Six is all my blacksmithies. Seven is all my gathering buildings. And this is most important in the early game. So if I want to upgrade a number of economy buildings, uh, economy stuff, I press seven. Then I press, it's like, yeah, I want the ax. I tap a few times. I want these things. I tap and I want this. Because I'm using my left hand for tapping, I sometimes will click the pictures, but I also imagine that if I get faster, I could be using hotkeys. However, because it is grid hotkeys, I don't think it's super intuitive because you don't know what you're going to find when you press tab. There's many different civilizations and therefore I do use my right hand for that. Maybe I'll get faster with that later. We'll see. Eight is usually going to be my faction special building. For Delhi Sultanate, that would be something like the mosque or maybe my H2 building. An H2 building, I cannot make it right now because I used the cheat code to have H4 from the start. It's not a cheat code, it's actually a map setting. But yeah, F, uh, number 8 and 0, I use them for my faction specific buildings so that I can use my mask on 8 and then 0 is going to be like make cheap scholars or special Mongol building or special uh, any building. So I'm pretty much using the whole thing with the most important things on the left. Now, let's go to the next topic, focusing on groups of units. I've already shown you that I don't like the game to auto-focus idle villagers or idle military. I'd rather do it myself. If I press on idle military by using F7, I can always press my hotkey for it, caps lock, to find them. Essentially what that does, what the menu thing does in the settings is it presses that focus command for you. And I'd rather do it myself, so I have the option not of not looking there. So uh, let's talk about how the game chooses focusing. In Blizzard RTSs, there is a very special but genius way how focusing on groups of units is done. Say, for instance, that these armies are in the same control group. You see the little one over their head? They're in the same group. In a Blizzard RTS, if you press one twice, it focuses on the units. And that's true here too. If this is my only group, it focuses on them. And that is very intuitive. But how would you do it as a game developer when there's multiple units in the same group? Well, here's how Blizzard does it. Whichever group is the larger group, that's what it focuses on when you press 1-1. One, one. That means that the smaller group is seen as inferior and will receive no attention from Blizzard's way of focusing. Here's how Blizzard does it if both groups are equally big. It chooses the one that happens to be nearest to your current camera location. It's also quite intuitive. If I'm somewhere on the map in the left corner of the map and I've got one large force here, and if you look at the minimap, I've got one large force here, it stands to reason it would focus on this as it is nearest. 
If this was smaller by just one unit, it would focus on the force at home. Here's how Age of Empires 4 does it. The center. And it's the average center of everything. That means if I have a 360 surround of units, and I got a few units everywhere, and I'm wondering where they are, it's like, wow, well, I haven't seen Katie and James in a while. I wonder where they've been hanging out. And what about Sander and Tommy and Ryan and Roger? Where, where are those guys? Let's check out. I have a control group. Oh, I've got 18 units in my group. Where are they? Hmm. There's nothing going on here. Well, let's find them one by one. And here's where it gets really hard. If I want to remove some of these units from my control group, well, it's easy with Shift-1 to remove all hand cannoneers. But what if I want to remove two hand cannoneers? I want to remove them from the group, and I then want to use my idle hotkey to send those two hand cannoneers, wherever the frack they are, to attack over here. Go mess up these trees in particular. Well, there's no way to do it. Because so many units exist in Age of Empires 4, the developers had a choice to make. Are they going to do it like StarCraft 2, where there's a paging system, where there's 24 Zerklings visible here, and then there's a paging system, page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4, page 5, which, by the way, there were no hotkeys for to navigate through, as far as I know. So you had to press on page 2, oh, it's still all Zerklings, page 3, oh, it's still all Zerklings, page 4, ah, there are the Ultralisks. Shift, 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 take three Ultralists out of the group, regroup control group one. All right, now let's take those three Ultras and send them somewhere. So the paging system isn't perfect, especially because as far as I know, there was no way to go through the pages with a hotkey, so it was necessarily slow. But this system isn't perfect either, because there's no way for me to remove three man at arms. So if I want to focus on my three man at arms, I have to press control left on man at arms. Then press my caps lock, which is the focus command. It says they're roughly here. <laughs> okay. Then I move them. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. I see moving things. I'm like a velociraptor. I can see it when it's moving or a T-Rex, whatever. Okay. Now I want to remove two men at arms. I need to click on these tiny ass models. Shift. Now I press control group one on my man at arms. Now I've got only the other man at arms. But I've also deselected all the pikemen. Now I can send these control group two somewhere else. So it's pretty tedious all in all. And luckily it usually the game usually doesn't come down to a few units. But I'm explaining some of the challenges and some of the techniques. Now I'm gonna press F8 again. I'm gonna take out my scouts, control group F1, and gonna send everything here. So yeah, part of getting better at the game is managing with these controls. But I'm also trying to explain that there is no one perfect way even if I think the focusing could have been done a little better. So now you know why sometimes when you focus on your youps, uh, on your groups of units, you can't find them. All right, we've already talked about barracks control pretty much, but there is one element that I want to explain that can be important. Some people don't control group their barracks. I use four for it, for all my barracks. But some people use the F1, F2 command, whatever it is, select all military buildings. Here's the reason why I don't do it. First of all, I'm hardwired and used to using the numerical keys, not the F keys, for something that's so important. It's hard for me to train to use a key that's that far up on my keyboard. If you can, kudos to you. But here's the problem. If I press Control Group 4, I get my archery ranges and my barracks. But when I press F2, which is my hotkey for it, it also selects my mask, therefore adding all kinds of keys to it and uh, creating another tier in my group, which includes my mask. Now, I don't see Scholar as a unit that I'll typically spam, so I don't really usually want to have my mask in the same group. But here's what I do when I make new barracks. Let's say I have a bunch of new archery ranges. The moment you make the blueprint, you can press F2 and add them to your group already. They are already considered to be stables as part of your group. So now I press Shift F4, I've added everything to it. But remember, I don't want my mask in it. So I shift click it out of it. Now I press Ctrl F4. So now I have the distinction between F2, which is everything, and 4, which is just the buildings that I want to have in it. You'll find that this is necessary with both units and with army. For instance, the game thinks that units like scholars or prelates for the Holy Roman Empire or uh, scholars that I've sent to religious sites to go capture them. 
it thinks that that is part of my army as well. Even though I think they're very purpose... Yes, thank you. They're very purpose-oriented units. I could send a scholar there. Then there's a major crisis at home. I press F8. And I'm actually going to have to stop the focus of F8 as well. I don't want... I don't think I want any of that. Anyway, uh, I press F8 and it actually focuses on them, but that includes the scholar. So when I press F8, I always quickly scan the grouping, remove the scholars, remove the scouts, and remove the fishing boats. The game thinks that fishing boats are army, even though they're usually, except when you're Delhi Sultanate, nothing more than villagers on the sea gathering fish. So anytime you're crutching on all army hotkeys, remove all the fishing boats, and then do new grouping. Okay. That is my advice for you in terms of uh, control on barracks and on army. Now let's talk about villager safety. You could be having a bunch of farms around your town center and you get attacked. So what do we do when we get attacked? Well, we take our villagers and we right click on the town center to go inside of it. However, right clicking is a smart command. It does the thing that it thinks you want to do first. If villagers are carrying resources, they think that they should drop off the resources. And only when each and every one of them has dropped off the resources, including the furthest one, does your right-click smart command change to something that looks like going into the town center. So if there's even one villager here that has resources and he's part of a group with the 19 villagers here, you cannot right-click to go inside of it to defend yourself. So what you want to do is to use the hotkey G. Seek shelter. The nearest shelter. And that's actually usually even better. Or you can press F. Left-click. So if, if some of them maybe have some resources, um, then you can press F. Left-click. Orders unit to enter target building. So G is the quick command. They will seek shelter in various places where it's possible. And it's the quickest way to protect them. But if you have a little bit more time, you can be specific about it. Go with F into this building in particular. That's how you overwrite the smart command. If you want to send your villagers back to work, to what they were previously doing, I found this works usually quite often. You press the return to work. But if you want to just remove them from the group, wait. Yeah, uh, you press returns all villagers seeking shelter back to their previous task or location. Wait, what? It's the same thing. Returns villagers garrisoned in the structure back to their previous task or location. Returns all villagers seeking shelter back to their previous... How is D and C different? But there's also F. Orders garrison units to exit this building. What's the difference between C and D? Okay, C is working for the most part. Oh, C is global? It's, it's global? All villagers in this structure. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's self-explanatory. I'm going to need to practice that. But keep in mind that this doesn't work on units. Scouts and army units can also seek shelter, and you need to press F for that. But if you press F while there's villagers and army, the villagers will be idle. So my recommendation is first quickly press D and then F. So if you've got both villagers and army, do DF. That way the villagers will go back to work if they were working and the army units will also pop out. That's my advice for you. Okay. Now, making multiple buildings. This is one a lot of people struggle with. So let's say that these villagers are actually mining on this tree and you want to make multiple buildings effectively. Oftentimes, you'll find that some buildings don't actually get made. And I can explain you why this is happening. So first of all, I select all my villagers. I don't necessarily want all 12 villagers to make buildings, but let's say that I do. If I press Shift first, then I press Q, then I press S, and then I left click here, and then I deselect. The villagers say, okay, you press Shift first, we will make this barracks as soon as we're done with this. What is this? Mining this entire patch of forest. In a Blizzard RTS, the villagers, the workers, will do one return trip. They will drop off their resources, then they will go work. A Night Elf Wisp 
We'll say, I will finish this little spinny thing. Wait. Okay. That makes no sense at all. Half of them went after two return trips and half of them stayed. <laughs> so it's the one tree. Okay, so they're finishing their tree. But the thing is, there's a lot of things that can happen that go wrong. Like these aren't done with the tree, these are done. So all in all, I think it is less intuitive and less snappy than you would hope for. So it is better not to hold shift right away. Here's the order. Press Q, press S, left click, then hold shift and press Q, S, and then you can make more. Then you press right click to cancel making more barracks. You're still holding your villagers, you're still holding shift. And then you go back to the tree. And what they will do is make barracks one, make barracks two, three, four, five, and back to the tree. So that's the order that you want to do. Don't hold shift before your first command. Take all the villagers you want, build the stuff, shift it, right click once to stop building another barracks, and then go back to your tree. You can shift click at the start and just right click at the end easier. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's as good, but if you do that, you should take one villager and do like this. W, S. Now he's going to do all that, then you right click and back to work. That is possible. But uh, I need to explain something about villagers. Villagers have the highest possible build speed by themselves, the highest efficiency in terms of villager per uh, production speed. The second villager helps to build something faster, but he doesn't add as much speed as the original building speed. And the third adds less still. This is called diminishing returns. Still, if you want buildings fast, it's good. But it is faster to take five villagers and make five separate barracks than to have each of them uh, go one by one, also in terms of travel speed. As far as I know, there's no quicker way to do it than to have each to work by itself, and this requires manual control. I don't know of a way where all five villagers make their own building when I give W, Q, or W, A commands. So I actually need to go to each particular villager and manually click them on each building. This is a quicker way to get all archery ranges done in the quickest possible way. But sometimes it's easier to just send them all to one, the second, then together to the third, together to the fourth, together to the fifth. As always in Age of Empires, I think it is valid to build something. For example, uh, RQ for university, and then I'm like, uh, uh, WS for many stables, and then I'm like, W whatever. And then I start taking villages like you guys built this, you built this, you built this. That is a possible way to do it as well. There are many different ways to do things. Now, here's something I want to explain that I think could really mess you up. How do you make multiple buildings? Well, you take all your villagers, you press W, A, and then you hold shift and you make a bunch, right? But the game can actually place them for you. You don't need to place it yourself. W, A, hold shift and keep pressing in the same location and it will find the closest possible place and you get a very nuclear base that has no gaps at all. It's very efficient. Uh, it's very easy to do. Now, that's a great way to macro, but there are upsides and downsides to it. The way that the, and you don't have to tell them to go do it. They will keep going to the next building. But it's funny. It's like someone tunneling into a tunnel. They don't typically do this in a very logical order, uh, necessarily. They go to the next closest place each time. And sometimes that means that they dead end all the way into here. Like if this guy decides to go here next, let's see where he actually goes. Does he go up? Does he go down? Whatever he's closest to. This guy is going to go down. All right, so what this means is that these three, they're going to go here, 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 or here. This one is going to go here. By the time they're done, I will have all of these buildings finished, but they'll be too far to auto-acquire the upper barracks. They don't consider that to be part of their original job anymore, necessarily, as far as I know. Let's cancel these to see if that's true. Maybe they will go there because I gave them a shift command. Let's see. 
they may actually go there. But there are some exceptions that I want to explain. Okay, so they do go there, and that's because they were part of the original shift command. So that's nice that they will go there. But sometimes they don't end up going. See, these guys didn't. They were part of it, but they're too far. That's, I think it's because this is within the range of influence of auto acquisition, but this isn't. It looks like auto acquisition is maybe one extra barracks of space. That means there's one barracks of space here, there's one barracks of space here. That means that these three will probably go to these two buildings. But if I cancel them, they probably won't go. And none of them is going to finish the job anymore in the top. Oh. So there's a few ways to try and manage it on a sloppy macro level. Here's, here's number one way. I make a bunch of archery ranges, right? Like this, for instance. And then I very deliberately start him with a new right click on the top archery range, knowing that there is a clear building path. And I don't even have to say do this, then this, then this, then this. You know why? This villager wants to continue building archery ranges. He's going to continue also acquiring new targets to build. Mm. So he will do it by himself. I don't need to say this, 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 and then this. Just stay working here. And because there is a path, he will complete it. But if I start in the middle, there's only one way to go. Well, there's two. There's only two ways to go. So he's either going to go up or he's going to go down. If he goes up, these won't be finished. If he goes down, these won't be finished. So try to start them on a logical path. In terms of this block, I would have started them like here and here. And then they're going to probably go to the inside and always keep auto acquiring. This is tied up resources that you end up never benefiting from. So you have to delete them. So that's how you can fix it on a macro level. Okay, now, rally pointing, traders, villages, and army. Sometimes, and I put my marketplace on control group nine, sometimes you have a marketplace and you want to send traders to mine gold from the marketplace, but there could be an enemy in between you. So you can actually say, right click here and a shift click here on the marketplace. That's gonna send the first trip to actually go to the marketplace but when they come back, they may still end up going through the enemy because they're going to choose the shortest path. But you can use shift rally commands. Now let's explain something else. If I rally command a town center anywhere or a barracks, there's going to be a yellow line that says these units will move there. If you place it on the tree, there's a blue line. These units will gather here. I wasn't aware of this until recently. But that's how you know. And because the game is kind of, well, for better want of a word, kind of fucky sometimes about clicking the trees, it's like, ah, can I click it properly? Know that you failed when it's yellow and you succeeded when it's blue. That's how you know. All right, let's give you a tip about how to shepherd sheep. Let's find my scout, where is it? F8, control, uh, left click on the scout. Bring the scout. Okay. So if I want proper efficiency for sheep gathering, I want to send those sheep back to a, a, a mill where there's villagers working and maybe gathering sheep. So what happens when I right click on the mill is the scout deposits the sheep that are following the scout and he makes them shepherd it to the mill. But this is from fairly far away. He has now done his job. The sheep have done their job of going to the mill, but that's as close as they'll go. There is a walking distance here that is inefficient. Now you can take each sheep, send them closer, but they're pretty slow when they're not shepherded. Still, it might be a good way to do it because if you split them, there's more surface area for villagers around them and they can work on different sheep more efficiently. But if you don't have time for this, here's how to do it quicker. Say that all these sheep are following my scout. Where is he? Yeah, he went all the way. Follow this scout. It's gonna take them a while, of course, till they're there. Here's how to do it. We're gonna, let's say we brought back some sheep. Some sheep. We're gonna say, right click here. Then we're gonna move past it. And once you know that the leash distance has them close to the mill, you right click on the mill with a shift click and then you shift click away to your next scouting location. Right click, shift 
right click. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Right click, shift right. Okay, right click, shift right click. Not the, yeah. Right click, shift right click. Right click on mail. Away, and I held shift for all of that. Or, if you want to do it even better, you need to kind of walk past it. Let's say I'm coming home, right click, move here, move onto the mail, and then away. And now they're closer. So, move past it the exact distance that sheep typically follow when they are shepherded on the mail, and now they're closer. So... I would go here, then I would go here, back on the mill, and then go on to the next place. And that's how to do it. A nice little efficiency for sheep being closer to buildings. Huh? Then, uh, the, the grid system, entering submenus, kind of talked about that. And now the best way to make walls. Walls are pretty important and almost every race, uh, every civilization can make them, every faction. But it can be a little tricky to build. Say I have a villager and I want to make walls to protect myself. Q, X. I click here and then I click here. It doesn't work because it's going over the barracks. So then I click here. Now I need to press Q, X again from here to here and that's it. But where is she going to start working? She's going to start working at the center of the new command that I gave. Where is she going to go next you think? She's going to go down here. What's going to happen when she gets here? Is she going to pick up and finish the wall here? No, she's not. This is going to be a half-built wall, even though I gave two commands to give the whole thing. Let's F8 this fracking wolf. So there's another way to do it, as soon as this wolf is freaking stopping to follow me. Uh, if I press Q, X, and now I hold Shift, I do this, this, and then this and I'm holding shift throughout all of it and then you do one right click command to cancel and you do one more escape to stop selecting the whole thing that's where she starts on the start and finishes it so shift is very important when building walls there's additional advantages to it if I press Q X once and I get it wrong uh, then it can be quite hard to restart. She also starts in the center here, which is really stupid, I think. Always hold shift, basically. Next, you need to know there's a small discount to building longer walls. QX, this costs 15 lumber. Th this costs 15 lumber, but this costs 15 lumber as well. This is 20, but this still costs 20 as well. 25, st still 25, right? There's ranges. And as it gets longer and longer, it keeps having that. So it is a very small difference, but build them in slightly longer bits, usually. Q, X. The cool thing is, is that you can actually make walls in different places. Very rapidly. But it's very hard to click walls once they've begun. As long as you hold shift, and then you press right click sometimes. You can left left click, right click. Uh, by the way, if you keep holding shift, you can keep building walls from one section, right? But if you want to start a new section, you press right click once to stop it from dragging from the original chain point, And then you can make new bits. Right click to make new bits, see? So I'm always holding shift during all this but I press right click to make new sections. Now, is she gonna be able to finish the whole thing? I doubt it. So you can bring multiple villagers to uh, help build them. But the key is always don't click here to start building the wall, but always click on the edge to build the wall. Same concept basically as the archery ranges. Yeah, this is a really competitive wall placement. I definitely recommend this. Uh, and that's pretty much all I had to teach you guys. Hope you enjoyed it and leave comments if there's anything else you would like explained in the game. Keep in mind, I'm still learning myself as well. Uh, enjoy!